In this video, we'll have a very, very brief introduction to logic circuits. This is something that you can study in more detail on your own. We will not be covering it in this course. However, it is a good way to represent visually a propositional logic statement. We're not going to spend a lot of time in this course on logic circuits, but it is a very interesting topic and it's one that you can study in more detail on your own. This is just a brief introduction so that you understand what a logic circuit is and that they are out there. Um, and essentially what it does is it takes a complex task and breaks it down into elementary logic functions. And what the way that it does that is it uses logic gates. So there are three logic gates, the NOT gate, also called the inverter, which I think kind of sounds like a superhero villain. Um, and unfortunately, the others don't have superhero villain names, so feel free to make up those on your own. But the NOT gate, again, called the inverter, takes just one input. This is our NOT gate, so it's just a triangle. And the output is the negation of our input. So that's the NOT gate, which of course makes sense. Then we have the OR gate, and the OR gate is going to take two inputs, and the output is going to be the disjunction of those two inputs. And then, of course, we have the last one, which is the AND gate, and the AND gate also takes two inputs. Notice this one is straight here while the OR gate was curved, and the AND gate will have an output of the conjunction of the propositions, which is of course the AND, P and Q, whereas the OR gate gives us P or Q. So for our first example, I've set up a logic circuit for you, and what I want you to do is determine the output of each logic gate, and then of course the overall output. So we're going to go through this one together, but this is just good practice. So notice P is going directly into this AND gate. And I've given you the little cheat sheet up here at the top so you can see what the three are, because you probably don't have them memorized yet. So we have P as an input to the AND gate, but here for Q, notice Q travels through this guy, which is a NOT gate. So that means this output is NOT Q. So the input into my AND gate is P and NOT Q. So here I'm going to have P and NOT Q. And then that's what's going to go in here to my OR gate. So this is an OR gate. Now, what else is going into the OR gate? Well, let's take a look down here. I've got R that's going into a NOT gate, which means my output here is NOT R. So into my OR gate, which is this guy, I've got P and NOT Q or not R. So that's everything that I would have to do there. This is the overall result, but to do this correctly, you would have to make sure that you give each, the output for each logic gate in the circuit. But this is our total output for the circuit. So the example that we just did is pretty straightforward and nice because they do all of the work for us. They make the gates, they make the lines. All we have to do is look at the outputs. This one's going to be a little bit harder. We actually have to construct the circuit ourselves. So again, I don't expect you to be good at drawing. I certainly am not, as you can already tell. But I'm, we're going to go ahead and create a logic circuit here for P and not R or not Q and S. So I've got four things happening. I've got P, R, Q, S. So anytime I see a not right away, I'm going to go ahead and put that triangle in there because that's going to tell me that it's a not S, not, not proposition. So P and not R, so here this gives me the not R. And again, we're looking for the and gate, so that's going to be this guy. 
Now, when you're drawing these yourself, sorry, I keep getting my fingers over here and making weird dots. When you're drawing these yourself, you don't need to put the outputs like we did on our last example. However, it might be helpful for you just to keep everything straight. So you can write the not R, but you don't have to. And you can write the P and not R if you want to, but you don't have to. Um, the Q and S, so we're going to have another and here. And again, this makes it not Q. Uh, let's go back to blue. So here I've got not Q and S. And again, these parts in white, with the exception of the gates, not Q and S. Those parts in white don't need to be written, so the outputs don't need to be written. Notice now I've got my P and not R. I've got my not Q and S. And in between those, I have or. So now I'm going to make an or gate. Uh, instead of making a giant or gate, we're just going to go like this. And then or. Nope, not a good artist. That's why I didn't go into art. What's my output? My output is exactly what I wanted, which is P, whoops, P and not R, or not Q and S. So again, as you're drawing this, really what we're looking for is can you do all of the parts in blue? And I'm going to change these gate colors to yellow. All of the parts in white aren't necessary. So as you're drawing it, if you're constructing it, we're really just looking for the actual circuit itself and not for the outputs, as long as your outputs make sense. Up next, we're going to take a look at some propositional equivalences, that is, two propositional statements that have the same truth value. We're going to look at these in a couple of different ways. In our very next video, we're going to look at showing that two propositional statements are equivalent using truth tables.